What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 2 of our scrolling platformer game series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched part 1 of this series, please watch it before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the video and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1, in which case you should have a scrolling which looks something like this. It's basic but it works for the x-axis and that's fine. So in this video what we're going to be doing is to make sure gravity works and uh, kind of scroll along in the y-axis as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is to zoom out and create this new block which is going to be called Y engine. Because as you can see here, we have an X engine and um, that's why our um, you know, scrolling in the X axis works, but we need a Y engine as well to make sure the same thing happens in the Y axis. So click on make a new block in blocks and I'm gonna call this Y engine. And you wanna make sure you click on um, this block which says uh, checkbox which says run without screen refresh and also add an input which is like Y velocity. Okay, now you can click okay and you should have the block pop up. All right, so within this, the first thing I'm gonna do is to make up a new variable, and this is going to be called time in air. And this variable is going to help us make a nice little animation, and uh, make sure you set it to the sprite only. So what the animation is going to do is that if you're holding on to the up arrow key, which is when we're gonna jump, uh, the player is gonna jump higher than if he just presses the up arrow key once. So this time in air is a pretty useful variable that way. So the first thing I'm gonna do within this function is to set up y pause to be y well. Actually not set y pause, we're gonna change y pause by y well. Um, big difference. So change y pause by y well. And after this, we're gonna update, okay? But keep in mind that, um, keep in mind that all of this is not updating uh, for each block of code and is only gonna update collectively. So what this is going to help us to do is to check some more collisions right after that. Now our time in air is going to keep track of whether the uh, platformer is on the ground or not. And we're gonna have a basic frame rate timer. So in case the platformer, you know, has taken off from the ground already, but it's, you know, it's just taken off, which is the case of when the user is holding on to the Aparu key, then we're gonna give the player some more time in order to get a higher height. So as of now, I'm just gonna change um, time in air by one, but you'll see where I'm going with this. So after you do this, now we can grab a repeat until loop because if you just have this and we go and ram into a platformer, it isn't really gonna make much sense, right? We need to have some kind of collision checker. So head over to control and grab a repeat until. And within that condition, what you wanna do is head over to operators, grab a not, and then head over to sensing and grab a touching. And you can change that touching to be obstacles, all right? And um, I want to call it obstacles, but anyway, let's leave it. So after, uh, after we have this in place, now we need to check whether the X velocity is positive or negative. Because if, uh, I'm sorry, not the X velocity, the Y velocity. So if the Y velocity is positive, then it means uh, we're going up, in which case we're gonna hit the top of, um, hit the top of like a platformer up, and then we'll have to move down. So if the X velocity is positive, then we have to move negative. And if the X velocity is negative, then we're gonna move positive. So that's the key idea. And let's get into programming the if then or uh, if else block now. So all right, so grab a uh, from the control section, grab an if else. And on top, we wanna check if the Y velocity is less than zero. So now head over to operators, grab a less than, I believe, uh, change the right, uh, right one to zero and just drag and drop this uh, variable right here. So if the Y velocity is less than zero, then it means that we were coming down, in which case we're gonna hit a platformer right here, and then we're gonna go up. So I'm gonna say change Y pause by one. So change Y pause by one. And uh, after this, we'll also have to set time in air to be zero, because now we are um, back to touching the ground and we can jump once again. So set time in air to zero. All right, and for the second case, if the Y velocity is positive, we're just gonna bump into a platformer. So there isn't really uh, much we can do right there, except for just, you know, uh, changing the Y um, position by negative one. Oops, so change, not set, 
change y position by negative 1. All right. There we go. And right after this, you want to make sure that you set up the uh, y, um, y velocity to be 0. Because think about it this way. Let's just say you're falling from space into the earth and you go, you, you come faster and faster and then finally thud into the earth. Now your velocity isn't literally going to be back to uh, whatever it was when you're falling down and instead you're just going to stop right there. So that's why we set the y, um, not y pause, but y velocity to be zero after we've touched an obstacle. So finally, before we get into the main platformer engine, I'm going to have one line of code right here and that is to update the screen once again because if we don't update the screen now, then it's going to uh, have a pretty stupid image, okay? And uh, that's not something I'm gonna go through. You can try it out and see if you want. All right, so just add a go to coordinates and that is pretty much all you need in your Y engine. So now you can scroll up to wherever your platformer engine was and this is gonna be some pretty long code. So I'm gonna drag the platformer engine down where we have some more space to work with. And uh, now we can get into working with the, you know, like the Y jumping uh, stuff. So I'm just gonna scroll this up and perfect, there we go. Now I think we have way more space and let's go. So since the event is going to be triggered when the up arrow key is pressed and by event, I mean the Y engine, we obviously need um, you know, an if then to check if the up arrow key is pressed. So I'm gonna say if, okay, and now you can just duplicate this left arrow key is pressed and uh, change it to up arrow and uh, change it to up arrow. And uh, after you're done with that, rather than just um, changing the Y velocity, what I'm gonna do is to have another condition check and well, with respect, this is gonna be with respect to the time in air so that the user can't jump like in a flappy board game or in some uh, other game where, you know, if you're not touching the platformer, you still, or uh, the platform or the obstacle, you still get to jump. And that's not something I want to include in this game. So I'm gonna say if um, not uh, sensing operators, if time left, uh, time in air, not time left, is um, less than four, okay? Or we can go less than five, I'm, I'm gonna go with less than four. So if time in air is less than four, then we can set the y velocity to be, um, uh, y velocity to be, I'm gonna go with 16, all right? But you can customize this and play with it if you want. So after you have this in place, the next thing we wanna do is to have another condition checker. And this is going to have like changing the uh, y velocity and using that in the Y engine itself. So I'm gonna say change uh, Y velocity by negative two. And this is going to make sure that the Y velocity constantly decreases and you can kind of view it as friction in the Y axis or gravity, whichever way you want it. And after that, like I said, we could have a condition and an if else, but as of now, I'm just gonna go ahead with using the Y engine and just put in the Y velocity right there. Uh, the reason I said condition checker is because once we have you know, a lot of things like water and lava, we would want to have a condition check. But anyway, that isn't too important right now, just use the Y engine. All right, so now you can head back to your code right here. And uh, this is going to be within, I believe, not the Y engine, or uh, the start game code, okay? And, or the play game code, anyway. So within this, you'd have, um, you know, set scroll X to X position. And after that, you also wanna set scroll Y to be Y position. Okay, and this is going to ensure that you scroll in both the axes. And by this point, if you followed me along correctly, you should, uh, you should have a working, you know, Y jumping. And as you can see, we jump pretty nicely. And um, that is pretty nice. We scroll in the Y axis and our platform game or platformer game works pretty well. And that's it we'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.